I always kind of wanted to do something where it was either me singing or rapping, but for a long time, I just couldn't find where my voice was going to sit. Like I was never happy or content hearing how I sounded. So it took me a while to like figure it out. And like, I, I listened back to my old stuff from like when I was like in high school and I, you can hear me rapping like Lil Wayne or rapping like, oh man, like Mac Miller, like the guys of the time, kind of more like high uh, on, on a higher register. And it just took some time. It just took time for me to find my voice. And it wasn't, I feel like around like 2017, 2018, I started to, to figure it out. And then 2019, I was like, okay, I know where my voice is going to sit. And then, I mean, the records kind of blew up. So I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> What's up? It's your boy, Tesher. I am a rapper, singer, producer, mixing engineer, anything I need to be to get the job done. And uh, let's get into these questions. Hey, baby, let me see it. I just wanna eat it. Jelly, baby, baby. Let me see it. Jelly, baby, baby. No, I really need it. Jelly, oh, baby, let me see it. Jelly, baby, baby. I just wanna eat it. Jelly, baby. I know the things and things that you like. I get so bored with music, to be honest, that I'm like switching up my style so often. Like, and that's also why like the music I make is so varied and people try to define it like it was just a is this a Bollywood record? Is it a pop record? Is it a Latin record? I just put everything in because I'm just trying to keep myself interested and excited. So I, you know, I couldn't even tell you what a Tesher type beat sounds like at this point, you know, because I'm just trying to, I'm just doing whatever sounds good. So I think the, the one constant is just energy, just high energy. For the past few years, like starting from 2016, I got really heavy into Latin music. Like I was listening to a lot of Anita, J Balvin, Bad Bunny, and then that kind of led me into more of just like the roots, like so it's like Celia Cruz, like old salsa records, Bossa Nova, really kind of like digging through the crates digitally kind of thing. And so from there, that directly led to when I was producing Jalebi Baby, I'm like, this is going to sound hard if I have some like Latin percussion and that kind of salsa melody going in. And then it's my own upbringing that puts in the whole, the Bollywood elements too. So it's really a mix, you know, it's everything that's around me and that I've experienced that's coming together when I make music. All right, so I was thinking of trying like a new Jason Derulo for this one, like a, a new J man, that's iconic. You can't change that. Hear me out on this one. I, Cause I, I just feel like it could be more epic. All right, man. Yeah. Check this out. <laughs> Damn, he was right. Hey. So the record, Jalebi Baby, the original version was blowing up on TikTok. And then past TikTok, it was really doing numbers on Shazam. It was like number one in like 35 countries and stuff. And so um, it was just blowing up all over the place. And so at one point I kind of sat and I was like, what's the next step that I could take this record? And I'm like, okay, we've already breached past the South Asian community, which I honestly when I made this song, I didn't think I'd actually make it past just the South Asian community. Um, and so that already happened. So I thought we could probably hit, you know, the mainstream. Let's try to make a push for this and like being like a mainstream record. So you could play, you know, Justin Bieber, Peaches, Tesher, Jalebi Baby, and then like Ed Sheeran or Dua Lipa. And it would all just fit in that, uh, in like a, a continuous flow. It wouldn't be too out of place. And I thought, you know, probably some, an, an easy or the most obvious way for me to do that would probably be through the help of a, of a feature of a well-known feature and honestly Jason Derulo was one of the guys was one actually one of the top guys I had in mind to try to approach to make that happen just because he's I mean he's so uh in tune to TikTok he's kind of done similar stuff before he does high energy records I could hear him on the track but to my surprise he came to me uh, and so I feel like I kind of spoke that into existence. I thought that into existence because he came to me and he was just coming to me saying, you know, I love the record. It sounds so new, so different. It caught his ear basically. And uh, yeah, we just kind of, I sent him the stems. He sent me his version. We kind of went back and forth a little bit, just working, working out some of the kinks. And uh, we had the new version just like that. The, the original, so the part that went viral on TikTok was the baby, let me see it, jalebi, baby. What that started off as was a, I had produced a remix of Yummy by Justin Bieber, a bootleg remix that I just wanted to put out just for fun. And 
at the very end of me making that, I'm like, you know, let me let me try something. And I went in and I put a verse on there and a little bridge part, which was the baby, let me see it part. And when I put it out, the last thing I had in my mind was that the part that would become the one that everyone loves was not even the Bieber part. It was my part where I was like, baby, let me see it. And so because that that part in that remix went viral, I had to go back, take out the Bieber vocals, write new lyrics, and then create the the, the version that we all know today as Jalebi Baby. So it's crazy how it happens. It's the things that you don't expect that just resonate with the audience. And then you're kind of like, okay, well, I gotta, the audience is telling me what to do. I gotta respect the wishes of the audience and, uh, and respond to that. And then that's how things start happening. Yeah, it's crazy. I would be lying if I didn't say that when I made that baby, let me see it part, I didn't feel a certain energy about it. Because I mean, look, I was making a remix of a Justin Bieber song for me to, put my own voice into that into that and thinking you know people are probably going to be a little weirded out if they just hear me coming in uh with my own part i was so confident in that part that i put it in so i i had a feeling that like people would really respond to it to this level no this is i didn't think we'd be getting to this point but no i think you it really just comes down to you just going into the to, to the studio or your bedroom uh and just having fun with the music and if you are feeling it, if you're feeling good about it, just put it out and don't overthink it too much. And, you know, the good thing about stuff with TikTok, it's not like you got to make the whole record, too. You could just make a, a little part that you're feeling good about, put it on TikTok. If people like it, you'll get that real time feedback. And if they don't, then you'll know. And then you can just keep going. But you just got to make sure you're doing what you think is right as the artist. You got to make sure you're fulfilled and you're doing stuff that you're happy with. So don't chase your viral moments. They'll happen if you are being true to yourself. Like everyone back home in Regina, where I'm from, is like watching this and seeing this and uh, just happy for me, sending me messages of support. Uh, you know, a lot of people are just happy to see me after, you know, grinding for like 10, 15 years to finally have this moment. Um, and especially it being such a moment that's so true to me. You know, I, I never thought that when the moment would come, it would come for a song that was both rooted in my South Asian identity, as well as in the Western side too. I was thinking it would happen for more like a rap track or, or you know, a hip hop song where, and then I would gradually build to show that side of me, but I get to like be a hundred percent of myself right off the gate. Um, and so I'm so happy for that. And all my friends and family have been so supportive through the whole process. Yo, it's your boy Tesher, let's get buzzed.